what have you made of last night's performance and you know, some of those players that you were giving a, a chance to for the first time this season? Yeah, p- performance wise, yeah, I was I was bored. I say all the time, I never want to be bored when I watch us, and yeah, I was bored last night. Um, in terms of the game itself, yeah, it, it was an important game for us. We because we had Jaden his first minutes, having not done any pre-season. Obviously, Ollie Mack not done any pre-season, and Cam having trained but not played football. So it's really important game for us to get those boys some minutes. Obviously, Izzy's in the same position. He got. Uh, an injury early on in pre-season um, so again missed all football that's that's the first bit for him so from that point of view it was a really important game for us um, but it would have been nice to still be in the competition to give us those options again you know going forward Has anybody given you uh, a decision to make for this weekend's team selection after after last night or not? Uh, yeah there's lots of players in consideration whether that's starting or, or from the bench you know because we've been Light on numbers uh, through injury and obviously gradually signing players, but <clears throat> trying to get players up to speed at the same time as well. So, yeah, you can do all the work you want on the training pitch, but the players need the games. Um, so, yeah, it was important for, for us to get those players the games and, and the action that they needed. You've had to wait a while for Cameron Archer to get over the line. Uh, what did you make of his, his performance and his uh, partnership with Oli McBurney? Yeah, perf- well... Performance-wise, we just wanted to get in the minutes. Um, whether it was 40 for Tom between 45, 60 minutes, but we're never going to be any more just because, again, of the exposure he's had. He played minutes in the, the 21 tournament um, and then came back to Villa. And although he's trained every day and had little moments, he's not had that <clears throat> real uh, planned sort of progression, if you like, in terms of minutes, 60 minutes and some 90 minutes behind him. So we needed him to get in the minutes and that was the most important thing because it puts him in a better position now for uh, for the game uh, Saturday morning. So he's in contention for yeah, definitely. For, uh, yeah. for, for this weekend. Uh, you've made made a signing as well, another one, um, Luke Thomas, who's come from, from Leicester. Tell us about him and how it's had to change what you were planning to do with your loan signings with the injury to Ben Osborne. Yeah, it just means we obviously with Reese still progressing with his injury, and then Lowy getting that. We were hoping Lowy could uh, get on through his injuries. Free one stood on a spring head at, in the get, free, pre-season game at Derby, <clears throat> so we knew he'd damaged his ankle ligaments. Um, we were we were wanting to get through it and carry on, but it was apparent once he was really trying to play at that top level and, and play football matches rather than training that it was hindering him. So he's had to have surgery on that. And then obviously Aussie with that injury uh, at the weekend, which we presumed was a significant one. We just get to the bottom of which route we're going to go down with that. But it means it's going to be out for a length, um, a decent length of time. So yeah, we needed we needed another body there to to come and play and give us that competition, not only cover but competition and that um, to get back to being healthy in that left wing back position. So is it changing your strategy, your transfer? strategy at all ahead of tomorrow night? Not really, because we've only, listen, we can have as many spaces as we want, but we've only got a certain amount of finance, so not really. And in terms of tomorrow, you've got until midday for anybody to be able to play Mm. on Saturday against Everton. Uh, How keen are you that anything is done before lunchtime tomorrow? I'd love it if if that was the case, and then I could go home after training, get my feet up and prepare for the Everton game. I'm hoping that's what our, uh, our window looks like. Business is done early, um, yeah, and then can prepare like we would for a normal game. How close are you to making any any more signings then tomorrow? Uh, down the line with things, yeah, down the line with things. Um, <laughs> close is a strange thing because you never know what which little bit's going to uh, hold things up. Um, yeah. So we're down the line with things. That's probably the best way to approach it. You, there could be one thing left to saw and it could take days, you know, but we're down the line with things. And when you hear about certain players moving, do you think, oh, yes, that will trigger... A, a, it's like a, a domino effect? Or not, or re- not, not not for us, not for the, the players we've got um, tabs on, now. In terms of preparing for the game this weekend, which is the most important thing, mm. how, how much of a disruption is it then, having the, the deadline tomorrow? Uh, no, because uh, for us, it should make us stronger, so... That's fine, um, and like I say, if, if we are putting um, things in place to get someone in before that 12 o'clock deadline that they can play, then we welcome that, and then after that, 
hopefully it's uh, feet up and prepared for the game. And do you change your training schedule at all tomorrow and the possibility that somebody might come in at 10 o'clock in the morning and has got to meet the players and know how, no. how they're going to play? It? No, no. That would be too late. Yeah, that would be too late. Um, probably the only thing we've got going from coming in this late is because of the cup game, you know, a Wednesday night to a to an early morning kickoff. Well, an early kickoff on the Saturday. It means they're not missing much training. We've had obviously a lot of boys recovering today, not on the grass. Um, so the bulk of the work will be tomorrow. I'm sure Tom Davis would have been desperate, or would be desperate, mm. to play against uh, his former club. He didn't get a run out last night. Is he still still short of any kind of? Yeah, we, we. Yeah, we, listen, he's. He's in a position where he's going to need minutes, definitely, but we want to make sure that he's ready for those minutes. Like I say, you think when we come back from pre-season, um, you generally have a good couple of weeks training before and then you might have 45 minutes and build up that way. Tom's just about had that now. Um, yeah, so yeah, we need to make sure his body's ready to cope with, with the demands and that's the difference when you're when you're signing players and the season's already started, uh, there's no real hiding place for them. They need to be ready to go in and play competitive football straight away. So, yeah, he's, we'll be working hard with him. Um, and if he's available for Saturday, great. If he's not, that's fine. And we, he's got another two weeks with us, working with us, ready for the Spurs game. As far <clears> as the game <throat> is concerned against Everton, last week before Man City, you were saying, look, it's it's another game. It's It's three points. What have you taken from that? that performance and, and how close you came to getting a point out of it to now playing a team at, at the opposite extreme? It'll be a totally different game. Um, no less challenging for us. We, we know where we are, um, but we want to be able to... I think in all the games, as I keep saying about the Palace game, we, we totally changed what we wanted to do, how we wanted to play, because we had to. Uh, and, and we've still been compromised in the other games. Um, so we're, we're building towards what we want to be. Um, yeah, so it's going to be no less challenging, just a different type of opposition. I've seen all of Everton's games, and I know Dyche wouldn't have been happy with the with the Villa performance, and obviously the result, and, and he wouldn't have been impressed with the other two results. But performance-wise, they should have won the games. So we know we're playing against a team who's, yeah, not won a league game yet. Um, but that's not through want of trying, and they've certainly been imposing their selves on the game, and we know it's going to be a tough game. With regards to uh, supporters' expectations, can you understand them thinking that, well, if we get a win against Everton, that's a great way to kickstart the season, maybe even more so than a win or a point against she um, Man City last week would have been? Oh, yeah, a win against anyone, great, a, a great way. We. I'd have loved to have won the first game. You know, like I said, we've, through diff for different reasons, we've ended up, like I said, being compromised and not being in the healthiest, strongest position we could have been at the start of the season. Um, the window closes tomorrow, so we know what we've got, and then we're down to work. Um, but I'd love to be picking up points in the meantime without a doubt. So if we can manage to get three points against Everton, I'd be over the moon, I'd be delighted. So two signings maybe tomorrow, three points on Saturday, that would constitute a good end to the month. That would be a fantastic end to the month, yeah. A great start for the new month. Thank you very much. Cheers, Chris. Thanks. Thank you. One or two of injury issues were, were addressed there, of course. Is, is everybody else OK for selection for the for the Everton game? Yeah. Go on. Anyone in particular, yeah? Uh, well, I suppose, to a certain extent, then, uh, getting back into the swing of things, how serious would Osborne be? How serious is Lowe? How likely is it that Thomas is just available to play? Oh, Luke's come in to play. He'll be involved at the weekend. Um, Lowe and Ben are going to be, yeah, they're going to be a while. Anis was getting back into the swing of yeah. things. Clearly, he was amongst the subs last night. Yeah, I wanted to, and and the plan was to give him some minutes last night. You know, don't always go to plan. I think you could tell that the 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 need for a game of football meant that we tried our best to plan things out for that game. You can see we'd made all our subs by 60 minutes, you know, to run the risk of yeah, if we'd have got an injury, if something would have happened, we, we didn't have that option, but it was important that um, some players weren't overstretched whilst getting the minutes that they needed. Um, like I say, but that, that's the position we're in. And fortunately, although we didn't get the result that we wanted, of course, but fortunately all those players are in a better place now than before they the, before yeah. had the game. And, and on that then, I suppose, McBurney obviously played some football last night. 
in the incremental development mm. or rehab process? Is he up to sort of speed for 90 minutes now, should he be required to be? Uh, listen, it'd be, I think it'd be a stretch for him doing 90, but he's in contention to start. Yeah, we're not, not holding him back. Uh, so again, he's weak. He got minutes on Sunday. Um, he's one of the boys that we looked after a little bit Monday, so he could train and play then. Then we've looked after him today along with the other boys. Yeah, so he's... Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he'll be fine. He'll be training tomorrow and ready to go. Mm. Um, with regard to transfer window stuff, is it the case that you are A, still principally looking at loans and B, are they more for the top end of the pitch still? Yeah. Right. And are we talking sort of centre-forwards here or different types of players to add to the, to the mix? Yeah, different types of players. Different types of players. I know we've addressed the idea of sort of confidence and hope, all that type of thing. Uh, if, you, if you're going to get them done before lunchtime tomorrow, are you are you confident that will happen? Because if it's loans trickle down effect, would it would it need to be? Yeah, we're not. To that, wait till yeah, to no, the we're not at that. Like I so said, we're not we're not waiting on anyone now. We're not waiting on uh, clubs making making decisions. We're sort of in a position now where, yeah, we, we we're ready to go. Right. So. Forgive my ignorance. Then is it just a case of getting the paperwork done on what you need, or or, or decisions? No, there's still, green there's still some decisions. Yeah. Green lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, in terms of players, we know what it'll take. We know what we'd have to do. Um, getting the green light and then getting it done is is where we're at now. Yeah. Right. On the other side of things, obviously there are players on the the outer reaches of the squad, and look, maybe some of the young lads, of course, that have filled in well in recent weeks. Is there any chance that some of those might be heading out on loan? The may, the may, uh, but two things I'm conscious we, we can't leave ourselves short in terms of a squad, and, and what we have beneath is different to what some of the other clubs have beneath. You know, the Cat One clubs carry a lot more players, and they're a lot older beneath their first team squad, things like that. So. Two things, we can't leave ourselves short there and we need bodies for training as well. We need to make sure we've got the right quality when we need it so that we can prepare for games. Um, so yeah, there may be some, uh, there may be. Just to come back to, to Thomas, of, of the left-sided <coughs> players you could have gone for, why him? What are his qualities that made him stand out for you? Well, two things, his availability and willingness and desire to come and play for us. So one, again, once... We were looking at that situation and wanted to get something done. It happened really quickly because everybody wanted it to happen, which is sometimes a, a you know a surprise, but it did. So the willingness and, and the desire for Luke to come and play for us was a big thing. Uh, in terms of him as a player, he obviously knows the league, he's played in the league. Um, he's got good quality with his left foot. He's sharp. Yeah, and... Um, He'll add a different type of quality to that position. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, he's another young player who's hungry, and like I said, he's bringing quality with him. Um, there's areas we want to work at him with, definitely. Obviously, he's got to settle and, and understand what we want from him, but still, as a footballer, for me, there's things that I can see in him which I'd love to work on and, and help him improve at. Yeah, so it was, a, it was an easy one to get done. Uh, Everton, of course, the, the next challenge. In these circumstances, with the points tallies as they are, who's kind of under more pressure to get the victory? Because Everton's problems, I suppose, are well documented, whereas Sheffield United are just hoping to get going. Uh, yeah, I honestly don't see it that way. Just we want to win. Whoever it was, we were going to try and win the game. What's happening in other clubs is, is irrelevant. I think uh, Everton's status as a club and the fact that they're the story at the minute. I think it overshadows, like I said, particularly those two games I've seen where they should have won the games and it would have been a totally different story. Um, so we've, our job's a little bit different. It's, it's, it's not about a story. It's not about uh, a narrative. It's about what's in front of you, how do you win it? And for us looking at Everton and, and what we see, we know it's going to be a tough game. Um, but it's one that we want to win and we're going to approach to try and win. And, and give us an idea as to how Sean... Because we, we got to know week in, week out, almost forensically, how Sean Dyche has Burnley played. So Sean Dyche has Everton. How, how do they go about their, their, their way? Yeah, lots of similarities and the, the demands that, that he puts on the players. Uh, it's going to be interesting now with the new signing. Um, signings, but certainly one I think will play. Um, 
and and with one or two injuries, how that shifted the the dynamic of the squad. My my opinion, what I've seen of him and, and the way I think he'd go, I quite like. I don't think it's weakened him. You know, I, I think they'll be uh, still have threats in in those forward areas, uh, maybe more so than what they've had in in recent weeks. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting game. We know they're going to be a challenge. We know the work rate's going to be first class. We know how organised they're going to be and how they're going to set up. Um, I think the, the the little bit of unknown is, like I say, through the the new players. Yeah, and I, I I am making light of a situation. No doubt they wouldn't want the problems, but it's not a bad problem when you've got those issues and you spend thirty million pounds on a new centre forward. Different yeah. world. It is a different world, but it's one we're not in. So, basically, it doesn't. I'm not going to get drawn into any of them stories. We know, we know what our uh, position is compared to others, and we we are not we're not in that place because we're not an established Premier League club like they have been. You know, the one of the only few to be always be in the Premier League, so they have got the resources. I think. So why would we worry about that? They they've been shopping in a different market to us. It's no problem. Good luck to them. Um, but like I say, it doesn't change our expectation and, and, and what our aim is and our goal is, which is to try and win as many games as possible. And they're the next team. So regardless uh, what they've spent, regardless what situation they find themselves in, we're just looking at them as a team and, and how they set up, how they play, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, and, and how do we try and combat that and get the three points. And, and just finally then, in each sort of match day that Sheffield United have had, there's been improvements in, in different ways, I suppose, and each game has provided different challenges. For this one, then, what do you want to see improve from the team you put out? What, the, from the previous games? Yeah. Yeah, I just want to win. I want to win. I'm not, I'm not going to sit and talk about it. You know, I won't. There's, there'll be bits that, that I do want to share sometimes in terms of what, what we've been working on, what we want to do. Well, I won't. Uh, so what do I want to see? I want us to win. Um Challenges to to certain players and units and and how we want to improve definitely get close to where we want to play, and then for me the biggest thing is what do we close the window with and then that will determine right this is what we've got this is how we're going to play to try and get the wins, um, and this is our little change that we do in game to try and get the wins, but until we know what we're left with I I, I couldn't even sit here now and tell you you know we'll know what we're trying to recruit in my head I'd, okay if this is the best we can get out of this is what we're going to look like right this is what we'll do but. As it stands at the minute, we're not there yet. Don't know. Thank you. Ta. Yeah, I'm happy with it now. I'm happy with the players. We've signed some good players, um, good characters, which is good. But we need more help. We want to strengthen to give ourselves the best chance. That's it. That's it. Um, top end of the pitch what, what's going to help us score goals what's going to help us be a threat bear in mind we've not we're, we're nowhere near the full potential of the boys we've got at the minute from who we've signed where we've signed them from but oh, oh, yeah we need we need more we want more um, but we're happy with what we've done so far